Hello, my name is Wade Demur, and this is Rotary Serving Our Community. One of the areas I've been very active in is doing water, water around the world, water for people, water for humanity. And I had the special privilege of meeting one person that's been doing this for quite a while, has an excellent system in place. And with me today, I have Bob Hather. Welcome, Bob. Oh, thank you. You're with uh, Life Water Drilling Technologies, correct? I started Life Water uh, Drilling Technology in 2012. Okay. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, have you been in water your whole life? No, I started out and still am a money manager, a portfolio manager. Okay. Joined Rotary 33 years ago. Wow. And during my term as uh, president in 2008, I heard a speech by D.K. Lee that inspired me to do something about the world water problem. Wow, okay. And how did you get involved with Rotary 33 years ago? You've been there for a while. You know, I had had a real good run in the investment business and I wanted to give back to the community. Okay, and you're a member of which club? The San Luis Obispo Rotary Just Club. Just wanted you to plug that one. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I'm sure uh, Governor Deb's gonna appreciate that one here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very good. Um, for water, how did you get involved with the water part of that? You know, after hearing D.K. Lee say that there were something like 25,000 children under the age of five that died every day from non-potable water, I thought that was what I will tackle in my year of presidency. Sounds good. And the building of that drill that you've done, did you just develop it on your own? Did you have an idea? You know, or? here we were right next to Cal Poly, which is known for its mechanical engineering department. And I thought that we could put some of those students to work in a real business, real life uh, opportunity to design uh, a uh, drill rig that might be suited for developing countries. And so you started this on your own, or did you have uh, a group of people working with you? You know, I had uh, assembled a group of advisors, one of which was real key, was uh, geologist Tim Cleeth, who's been a long-term member right. of our Wednesday Rotary Club in San Luis Obispo, the De Tolosa Club. And he has drilled water wells on a charitable basis in 25 countries around the world. And he said, what we need, and there isn't one out there, is a cable tool rig, a percussion drill rig. Okay, and that's what you've designed then? That's what we went after. Okay, good enough. And the cost of these, uh, how much do they cost, roughly? Well, our target was a lot lower, but they wound up costing about $80,000 wow. by the time we developed a rig that was robust enough that we could send into a very remote area and not worry about it breaking. Got it. And so um, I actually got to go on site with you on one of these test drills um, at your house, actually, and you had some people there. They were from... Nigeria. N Nigeria. And um, at that time, we were able to actually see this thing in place. Uh, it was great. Um, one of the advantages of actually being on site is that you can see these. Uh, for example, there's no way we could put that drill rig here in, this, in the studio without causing too much trouble. So um, with that, if you wouldn't mind, let's jump into the video, take a look and see how this system actually works. Super. Sounds good. Thanks. This drill stem is heavy enough to drill through uh, rock or any other kind of formation. The, the, the carbide uh, button bit, these carbide buttons on the bit can go through anything and they just don't wear. They last and last and last. We carry enough onboard water to drill about 20 feet. And uh, we've got the benefit of having two lines. So when it comes time to run casing or bale or doing pump service, uh, it's all there. We, we use this rig to set pumps and set casing. The drill and stem is 21 feet, weighs about 1,200 pounds. And we often drill with a nine inch diameter bit. And that enables us to use five inch casing with a two inch annular seal that we use a uh, uh, cement sanitary right. process. We have 500 feet of cable, which enables us to drill about 450 feet. Okay. And I have drilled uh, personally 360 wow. with the rig. Uh, the hydraulic system makes the uh, control so smooth that it eliminates some of the uh, dangers of having the old clutch systems that they had on the Bucyrus rigs for instance it eliminates all that 
It also eliminates a gearbox that's hard to get your hands on from Bucyrus, which, you know, it's not making those rigs since 1988, I think. Mm. All of these components are readily available throughout the world and uh, no, nothing costs more than about $1,500 as far as an individual component. No. So uh, if anything breaks, it's not a big expense to fix. Uh, when you dial it in and operate this thing, it's smooth enough to set your drink on the rig and it won't shake <laughs> off. It, uh, it, it is a very smooth operating rig. The process of drilling with cable tool rigs basically emulsifies your cuttings and when you get about three or four feet down the hole you take the bit out and you put the baler in it and you actually bring the uh, the cuttings into your your baler and then drop them I drop them into a bucket and a chute to keep my work area clean six and a half inch bit we can do on average about 40 feet a day. Got a locking toolbox and basically the few tools that you need can go in the box and they're locked. All runs off the uh, Honda motor there? Everything runs off the Honda. Nice. Putting the, the mast up and down and the mast folds, uh, you didn't get that shot, but uh, unfortunately, but uh, it's quite compact and pulls nicely behind the vehicle. Yeah. I have a standard Chevy pickup that uh, it pulls this thing beautifully. So those hydraulics actually uh, raise and lower the mast itself then That's I'm taking correct. that. And you could probably also do adjustments on that one to get it vertical, be my guess. So, the way we get the, everything vertical is we do it through adjusting with the jacks. Okay. And there is a tool guide that, uh, excuse me, that's located right in this area that we use to center uh, the drill bit. And uh, we will work the jacks until the uh, tool, the, the drill stem is right in the center of that gotcha. tool guide. Gotcha. And we'll continue to use that until the drill gets uh, to where the top of the drill is about this high. Okay. And I take it off and just discard it and drill the rest of the way without the, the guide. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, throttle system is kind of like what uh, on an airplane, it's a push-pull. Mm -hmm. And then for fine-tuning, you can, you can turn oh, gotcha. it. And that enables you to adjust the, the cycles anywhere uh, you want it to be. And in some formations, it's going to hum along at uh, 58 hits a minute. Some it's going to be better at 57 a minute. Uh, you, you just uh, have that flexibility to smooth out the operation with, uh, with the throttle. Uh, these four levers operate the different um, items. This, this lifts the mast. This engages what we call the walking beam, the part that goes up and down. This, this uh, winds up the uh, mainline cable and lowers it. And this does the same for the sand line and the baler line. This adjustment here, you just um, put in whatever notch gives you the proper friction on your mainline spool uh, so that it's automatically going to find the bottom every time it pounds. And I had mentioned to you the, the big risk is the f operator falling asleep in a chair because <laughs> once you get it adjusted right, you can just sit back and uh, drill for about three or four feet <laughs> and add some water to make a slurry and then stop the drilling process, take the bit out and put the baler in and just keep cycling that process until you're down to depth. And when you hit water with a cable tool rig, the tool comes up really bright and clean. You, there's no question about whether you hit or not. And in the old days, to keep the boreholes open, they used to use uh, drive steel with cable tools. And uh, we found that totally unnecessary. We do everything open hole. And if we get into an osh, uh, a situation that the formation is falling in on us, like saturated sands and that type of thing, we just mix up a little watering trough that I have with a half a bag of, of bentonite 
and put the bentonite in the hole and that develops a wall cake and, and static pressure on the wall of the, of the board and we keep drilling through the sands and uh, consolidated materials and we bale right through that as well. So um, we've dispensed with using steel uh, for uh, casing. Replacement parts on this one, you said most of them uh, pretty much just sit with the machine. You don't have too much maintenance, long term, short term. Well, in the short term, every day we apply grease to all the pillow blocks. And the, the uh, uh, spool on the walking beam. Other than that, uh, I change the oil in the Honda engine every 200 hours. And you might have to adjust the tension on the chains that uh, transfer the power from the hydraulic motors to the spools and the walking beam. Everything's greaser though, right? You never have to take anything apart? Uh, as far as uh, something like, a, let's say, a, uh, a hydraulic motor breaking, I, I like to provide a spare hydraulic motor when I ship these. Got so it. We, we generally will ship spare cable, which is another you know, 500 foot spool, uh, two spare tires, and uh, two spare hydraulic motors. Sometimes I put in some extra chain. I always put in extra chain lengths. You just never know. Mm -hmm. But uh, that gives you a kind of an ease of mind that if you're out in the, in the bush somewhere, you've got everything that is likely to give you a, a, some sort of breakage. Right, now I just noticed you uh, use everything that's uh, square rectangle tubing made out of steel. Uh, I noticed you don't have any bracketing or gussets in there, so I figured those things are pretty durable the way you designed it. You know, the, I think what adds to the durability is that every piece of steel on this is CNC cut. Okay. And all the tubing gotcha. you see is laser cut with tab and groove. So everything mates up gotcha. perfectly. There's no gaps. And then our weld bead is able to penetrate evenly. Uh, and that's what makes a strong yeah. unit. Yeah. Definitely. No, it's good to notice there's, uh, well, again, most of the time, gussets you'll see is because of a faulty manufacturer or design. You don't have any on this one, so it's clean. Looks good. Great job. You said the, the water tank that you have in the back holds how many gallons? This, this water tank that comes with the unit has 40 gallons. 40 gallons. And that'll get us through 20 feet of drilling. Okay. And it has an electric motor that provides uh, pressure, 60 oh, pounds pressure. So got it. You know, uh, I mean, it's like a. Now is that a separate line, a uh, separate motor, or is that still working off the same main uh, main motor? It, it's a it's an electric motor. Oh, it's comes electric off the battery. Motor. Gotcha. We have a battery on board for the electric start. Okay. Not only that, um, every now and then a cable will wear to the point where I won't want to risk using that cable mm -hmm. anymore. So I've got a small inverter that I plug into the battery and I use a regular cutoff uh, wheel and I'll cut the cable and I have a ladle and I bring Babbitt and fuel uh, out to a job site and I can replace bad sections of cable. Now you did tell me also that you carry um, in the back of the truck on some of these remote jobs an extra 250 gallon uh, I've Tank. got auxiliary water, so if we're in an area where there just isn't any water, we bring enough. Got it. Yeah, got it. I would say most of the wells in the world are 150 feet right. deep or less. Right. True. And so the uh, amount of water that's stored in that 250 gallon container is adequate to finish a job. Now, I'm guessing that most of the um, equipment that comes with the rig itself will sit on that trailer. So you actually have pretty much void the back of a truck if you're dragged this in on a truck. Uh, Pretty much so. Okay. The items that we bring out to a job include about 250 feet of, of um, submersible uh, pump wire mm -hmm. and a submersible pump, and we bring um, the, the uh, drop pipe to go down. And so we, I like to clean the wells out until the water coming out is just crystal clear. We do that usually with a, with a pump, okay. even though some guys are satisfied just doing it with the baler. They'll bail all day until <laughs> they get just totally clean water. Yeah, yeah. No, good. Good idea.
Well, Bob, thank you very much. That's a, that was a good follow through. Uh, enjoyed it. How long have you been building these things? So I think I set up the factory to build them in 2015. Okay, okay. And you've been doing this since 2009, something like that? I started as, as a rotary project when I was president in 2009. Uh, we uh, enlisted Cal Poly's engineering department right. to help get the uh, project started. And then we uh, graduated on to uh, using the team that I put together uh, for further advancing the concept. And then we came up with our first durable manufactured rig in 2015 that first rig went off to Indonesia and is uh, drilling wells today Got it. Wow. Uh, it's a, a Christian based organization that's, uh, that's just done a wonderful job good good and you have some people here you want to bring those people in tell us uh, who you have observing today's uh, demonstration yeah. so uh, with today's demonstration we've had join us uh, Becky, who uh, is president of Hanfa Corporation, and manu they manufacture homes. They are, intend to build about 2,000 homes this year in Nigeria. It's in Nigeria, a big home builder. All right. 22,000. 22,000 is how many you've built total? We've done about 15,000 in the last 10 years. And we have 22,000 ongoing as we speak right now. Wow, outstanding. Yes. Yes. And we're doing a lot of water projects across Africa, in Nigeria and other communities in Nigeria, rural communities, and we're trying to go into other African nations to provide water for um, dry environment. Wow. Yes. So the presentation is the concept that goes around in line with the United Nations policy for the right to water as a fundamental right, not a privilege. It must be as a right, you must you have access to water. Meaning that in line with the conviction of United Nations, that is the concept of what we put it together. To ensure that everybody, every citizen of North Africa, of the world, has what is so called right to portable water. That's the concept. Okay. Which is happy to cook. Uh, I've been um, the distributor of this LV360 in Nigeria. We've been trying to push the rig to where we think it's very, very important because we have challenges of water all over the, all over Nigeria and surrounding African countries. So we have different clients. And Bistern, uh, here is the president. Uh, it's one of our clients. And we've seen the nature of their jobs on ground. It's not a gimmick. It's not a forensic uh, program. <laughs> it's for real. So projects are there and we need water in where these estates are because there's challenge of water all over in Nigeria. Most especially in Abuja, the pipe of water is not connected completely to um, all the locations. Yeah. So uh, they felt um, it's necessary and that is why you see we took a long trip about uh, 18 hours flight <laughs> there's no over travel. There to come and see this for real 18 hours and, uh, uh, yes well, you make good time usually it takes 19 yeah. <laughs> and that's serious i've seen that a few so times <laughs> and the, the clients uh, the, the customers that need this and uh, generally could need some kind of uh, uh, background support again so that we can extend this thing to people the dividend of water which is a natural thing and by policy everybody need a clean water so we need this so that we can take it to the various community mm -hmm. yeah. and they have the water so that's why we're here and, uh, right, uh, for at the spot now we are trying to make arrangements for five places nice sam that's and i met through a rotary contact a mutual rotary <laughs> contact uh, uh a gentleman in uh, the rotary club in uh was it Fort? No, not Fort Lauderdale, but uh, uh, Jacksonville. Uh, Jacksonville. Yes. Uh, heard about the rig, and uh, contacted Sam. Sam got excited and contacted me. So that's how Rotary's fingers are reaching out throughout nice. the world. Nice. And I hear you're going to be moving five of these into uh, Nigeria. Yeah. That is the plan. That is yeah. Yes. That is great. Great. And we need up to twenty. We need twenty actually. Oh, twenty. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, we need to do five. And the, but the reason is. Uh, uh, you know, in Nigeria, you know what it is in the aspect of uh, 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 financial circle in Nigeria. Sure. You go into the bank, the interest rate is high. Yeah. Yeah. You don't get support from right. the government or anybody. So, and sometimes if you get the support, you have to be in the cartel. So if you are not in the cartel, you are not, you're out of it. Yeah. So now it's a personal thing the company Biston is trying to do. Nice. So uh, now they want to start with five, but actually they need 20 and we'll take it from there. 
then the surrounding okay. countries will nice. be seeing this thing. Nice, nice. And the community. So you're going to share this with other communities, not just for the building of just your homes. Then. Of course. No, 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 no. That's There's very no nice. Good yeah. for you. There's no clean water. And people are always feeling sick because yes. the waters are not treated well. Yeah. Having typhoid and what is more than typhoid. Yeah. yeah. Beyond beyond the project we are doing, which is the commercial part of the Bistan Group, there's an NGO. The company itself, the group has an NGO, which is where we need more of this because we want to take up free water to communities, the, the, the west, the east, northern east, where you have a lot of IDP camps and a lot of issues going on in Nigeria, Dis people displayed everywhere and all of that. So beyond the business part of it, which we need for the 22,000 units of project going on, we also want to take this into the right, NGO yes. just to do you know, community development for okay, other, please, if we have right away, if we have nation. like, um, at a go now, we we'll have like uh, 10. Honestly, I'm going to tell you, uh, the World Head Organization will be aware of this. Yeah because yeah. already they are on ground there but uh, that we don't have uh, something portable like this that mm -hmm. can move around and, but with this we can single we can and get into different places yes. and there will be water do sanction provide water people come there and take water from there we are done as of right for yes. free, as I said, for free. No, portable water water itself is a natural thing which we've been told that what we start not this as a company as organization but as a non-governmental organization yeah you understand me? And basically, we believe it's a passion, giving back to the society. Sure. Not only just getting into our own organization, but giving back to the society. That's more reason why the organization is put together. We have the non governmental organization, which is basically, specifically for the purpose of achieving that. And going to the rural areas all over, not only in Nigeria, we hope it to be outside Nigeria, yeah, African nations, for people to benefit you from go this. To Chad, there's problem when you go to Nigeria, problem when you go to the Republic, the same thing, get to the northern part of Cameroon, the same thing. We all share that same common goal. Yeah. So good. really, beyond all of this, we want to really commend Mr. Bob for this oh, yeah. initiative. This, this is fantastic. It's, it's, it's fantastic. fantastic. This is needed across the world. Africa, every part of the nation needs this, really. And, Even uh, in the Middle East. Yeah, they this, need this it. is Great. really commendable. And we have contacts and in the Middle East because we do other business with them. Nice, nice. Uh, you it's go to the desert, uh, part of uh, Egypt, you're going to Alexandria, yeah, desert, yeah. no water. You go to, uh, how do you call it, you go to Qatar, the same thing. You go to back of Dubai, it's desert. The same kind of soil here. Nothing going yeah, on. And, and I think with it, Bob, it is. As an idea to what my my, my president said, it is indeed the one to celebrate you. Yeah. You deserve a very great call for this. Over the fact that your you target is basically water. There are other people that will invest something to do related to oil. Mm -hmm. yeah. It has not it has no direct impact on human. human. You are investing on human. Yeah. It's commendable, Mr. Thank Paul. you. Mm. It's coming, but I think the world to celebrate you. Yeah. All right. You deserve yeah. that. That was uh, one fascinating video, seeing how the system works. It uh, looks like it's working quite well, very efficient. So tell us a little bit about what happened after that one. Uh, we want to get an update. Well, uh, we, we've been um, attempting to get the word out. And so we uh, now have a rig in Indonesia, one in Haiti, one just recently shipped to Botswana, and we have two ordered for Uganda. Wow. Outstanding. And the one in Nigeria, the one that we just saw, actually they implemented that system, put that in place? The, the one in Botswana, oh, Botswana. is actually uh, just arrived a month ago and they've already drilled three wells with it. Okay, oh great. Successfully. And successfully, good. Now how much, how many of these wells do you think uh, one of these uh, rigs could actually drill? You can drill a well a week. A well a week, wow. And then the longevity of the system, the, the actual unit itself? You know, these were all built with uh, parts that can be easily repaired, so I expect to see these on the road a long time. Okay, tell us one of the successes that you've had and you've told me a number of them but some of the success in these drills are pretty fascinating uh, one of the most uh, exciting is this gentleman from indonesia who's put in water wells on these island communities and turned desolate uh, water starved uh, island communities into prosperous farming communities wow and you said that he actually sent you a before and after picture of <laughs> even his house where he lived exactly it, it lifted everybody's uh, uh, 
livelihood up tr tremendously. So you went from a grass... A grass hut to a uh, cinder block house <laughs> as a result. Yes. That is impressive. So where do you see this going for you, yourself? Are you going to continue doing this? You know, I want to put this uh, whole project in the hands of a more capable body that can do uh, a, a more justifiable job of getting this thing manufactured and distributed. Good. So have you considered doing a, a nonprofit or a for-profit type of uh, company? Well, uh, so, so far there's been no profit, so you might consider yeah, me a nonprofit. Maybe do the nonprofit <laughs> part. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I really what I want to see is the, is the rig proliferate. That's good. Uh, that is a good one. And how many of these do you manufacture or put out each year? So Perfect. we've made 12 so far, 12 and so far. they're around in different places. Great. Okay. So with uh, a little bit of manufacturing in time, we can get this all over the world then, especially through Rotary. Yeah. No, it's an outstanding project. Uh, looking forward to seeing some future developments of this, and please keep us posted. Be interested to find out how, in fact, we could expand on this, because you put together one great project. Thank you. We will. Okay, with that. Well, thank you very much, everybody. Um, we will see you next time, along with seeing how water is being handled around the world through Rotary. Uh, with that, tell the next time. Thank you.